Everything you can see behind me is coming to Vietnam as part of my clothing and my gear for filming and uploading my YouTube videos. And I'm also going to be showing you and sitting down and telling you my plan. It's a bit of a rough plan. The plan is there is no plan, but we do have a kind of challenge that we're going to be doing. So I'll explain more about that. But first, let me show you what was in this bag. I had it all out on the bed, all of my clothing, all of my gear. So let's have a look at what we're taking to Vietnam and then I'll tell you what the plan is. Let's go. So everything kind of this side of the bed is the clothing that I'm taking. This is a nomadic backpack. I found these guys on Instagram. It's got a nice little area for your laptop and things. And then in here, there's a nice big compartment and lots of little pockets on each side. It's really useful. I love this bag. And uh, so she'll be coming with me with all of these clothes. So let's start at the back. You've got three pairs of socks and nine pairs of underwear. I like to have lots of pairs of underwear. And then uh, trousers, I've got waterproof North Face trousers that are really good. There's, um, there's a zip as well down the bottom so they're really easy just to quickly put on over my jeans. Um, I've got a light pair of jeans in blue and then a black pair of jeans, a thicker pair. I'll be wearing these every day driving and then when it rains I'll put these on top of my jeans. And then this pair will just be for like you know, if these get wet or I, I want to go out and have a few beers and I want to just wear something different and feel a little bit normal, then I'll wear them. I'll also take two shirts with me. I've got this buttoned Ted Baker shirt and this buttoned retro shirt I got in a secondhand market, just in case I want to dress up a little bit. Then I've got some fake Under Armour <laughs> running shorts for swimming and for exercising. And anytime I want to wear shorts, I'll also be taking these, but I'm wearing them today. These are just some khaki shorts from Uniqlo. I invested in a really good quality rain jacket. This is a North Face one. And uh, I tested this in Chiang Mai recently. It was pissing down rain and it kept me bone dry. Very important. It's not too thick, but it will be nice to throw on in the rain or if it's kind of cold up in the mountains, which is important. I also am taking one layer. I've got this thin black jumper from Uniqlo that has this like special material it's supposed to help you keep you warm and so if it does get cold up in the mountains I'll be able to throw this layer and if I'm still cool I'll throw on the jacket. T-shirts, I'm just taking five t-shirts or is it six? Yeah six. I've got these uh, Under Armour shirts that I got from MBK so they're not real but um, lightweight, easy to dry and can run in them, can exercise in them and just throw them on and you're good to go. And then I've got these two shirts from Uniqlo, just normal t-shirts, nothing fancy. And then I got this one in Bangkok recently. So I've got three colors and three sport shirt kind of things. And underneath that is my day bag. This is just a Converse little backpack that I like to throw gear in when I'm going out on a bike. If I'm going on a hike, if I'm going on a day trip, I don't want to take my big bag. I'll just throw my camera equipment and things and bits and bobs and food and snacks in this bag. Running shoes, I have these nice Ultra Boost Adidas in black, um, where these running, walking, just doing whatever, and they're really, really easy to squish down and squeeze into your bag, don't take up much space. Got a cap, a little Thailand cap that I bought in PP. Got face masks, and then my toiletries, a razor, a toothbrush, and some toothpaste, some hair gel, sun cream and some moisturizer. I also have a watch. I bought a new watch. This is a Bell & Ross. I bought this as a present to myself for completing 77 provinces. And this is important. I got a fake Mount Blanc leather money clip. And in here, I'm going to be putting $50 worth of Vietnamese money because I heard that, um, Vietnamese police can sometimes ask for a bribe and you don't want to have your real wallet. This is my real wallet. So I'm going to have a secondary wallet with $50 worth of cash in maybe my North Face jacket. So if I do get pulled over by police, I do have a Thai driving license, which is valid in Vietnam. But if they catch me for something else 
or they say that it doesn't work or it's not allowed and they are adamant, then I'll have a small amount of cash in that staged wallet, secondary wallet, which is uh, advisable uh, to have in Vietnam, sadly. So that's all my gear. Oh, there's one more, and that is what I'll be wearing when I'm flying and when I'm driving. Um, so these won't have to fit in my backpack, but I'll be wearing these. This is North Face black boots. I wear these um, pretty much every day when I'm driving. Um, and I only wear the, the Adidas Boost um, when I'm doing exercise and things like that. So that's all of the gear, all my clothing, and it really fits in that bag, really super simple. Like, the, and I have quite a bit of space. Like, if you don't believe me, let's check this yeah. out. There you go. Everything is now in there. And there's plenty of room left over, all around the edges and on the top. I'll squeeze my laptop in there and then I'll just close that. And she's good to go. <laughs> right, so that's half of the stuff. That's the clothing. Now let me show you the gear, the equipment that I need to film and edit these videos for you. Okay, so we have a MacBook Pro M1 chip. This is what I upgraded to when I was in uh, Vietnam. No, it wasn't. Where was I? Samui. And uh, I was watching some Gary Butler, watching some Vietnamese travel vlogs. Um, and a charger, obviously. There we go. Bosh. So MacBook and a charger. This is my GoPro chest mount, which I use to film all of my you know motorcycle shots from the chest view um i do have a little sponge that i super glued to this because uh, it just helps with uh having a better angle and then this is my lavalier mic which plugs into um my media mod which is over here um so this is my ssd hard drive i just bought another one because this has all of my Thailand footage, all of my renders, all of my final videos here. And I like to keep that with me. So I just bought um, another $200, one terabyte. And this will have all of the Vietnam footage on here. They're so small. They're so light. Very reliable. Fantastic piece of equipment. And yeah, the lavalier mic system will plug into the media mod over here. As you can see, there's the jack for the... Uh, lavalier mic and then that goes on to the chest mount like this and obviously inside there I have the GoPro 10 which I shoot and the good thing about the GoPro 10 is inside the media mod and plugged into the uh, chest mount lavalier mic it's fantastic audio fantastic video and if I want to vlog on this I can and I do that very often the media mod GoPro is a good vlogging system three batteries for the GoPro 10 I also have a GoPro 7 because I'm going to be connecting, this is a handlebar mount system. And uh, I, I was gonna get a GoPro 10, another GoPro 10, but I remembered um, that I had a GoPro 7 lying around. So on my handlebar, I'm hoping to have a GoPro 7 facing me and a GoPro 10 on my chest facing forward and I'll be able to cut between the two. Hopefully that will give the footage a bit more of a dynamic feel. I'll be able to show you what I'm looking at and then cut to me talking to you about what I'm seeing or what I'm feeling or whatever's happening around us. So that was uh, about a $30 um, yeah, accessory, which I haven't installed yet. These two pieces together will be the home for the GoPro 7. And I've uh, got some spare batteries for the GoPro 7. This is my vlogging camera. This is the Sony ZV-1. This is actually a broken one that I have. <laughs> I'm filming with the, the one that works. And a phone charger, GoPro charger, another GoPro charger. Um, these are my batteries for the, uh, for the Sony ZV-7. And here's the battery charging hub. So I have about six batteries. Um, I've got a GoPro tripod for vlogging with the GoPro. In here I just have some cables, some extra charging cables, and just extra things that I need. Um, this is my brand new Peak Design like satchel, like side bag basically. Really good for throwing in the drone, throwing in the camera, and filming during the day. Waterproof, weatherproof, and really hard to be stolen. Um, really high quality material. I've got my wallet. And uh, over here, I keep this, this is like my passport, my documents, my visa information, 
This is my tax back because I bought a new drone so I can get my tax when I leave the country and, and some but just bits and bobs, paperwork, visa, vaccine information, stuff like that. I've got my phone. I have a Vivo Chinese phone. Uh, not that interesting. <laughs> uh, this is my SSD card reader um, for inputting my footage. Obviously, this goes into the MacBook and my memory cards squeeze into there. I also have a secondary one because if this breaks, or I should say if that breaks, we're in big trouble. So this is my backup. Um, I have this Manfrotto tripod, which I'm not a big fan of. I have this new tripod from Ulanzi. This is really cool. It like extends out really far. And Gary, the Roman cook, gave me that. So I'll be using that, I think. Lovely piece of equipment. Two Sharpies, because you never know when you need to write something down or mark something. Um, we talked about this already. These are some spare microphone shotgun mounts. I have an S little micro USB that uh, Michael gave to me and it's got some movies and some TV series on there. This is a box that will hold most of my accessories and GoPro stuff. This box here, this soft GoPro bag is actually home to my DJI Pocket 2 and it's lavalier mic system, it's charging cables and some GoPro accessories and things like that. Um, that will probably get full with all this kind of stuff as well. And then here we have the DJI Mini 3, the brand new one, which we tested out recently. And a fantastic drone. And I also got the professional RC controller for it. And if you saw the vlog, you saw that I cracked the screen already, which I was pretty devastated about. And finally, I think this, oh yeah, there's two more things. Then I always take this. This is so I can charge my phone, my laptop, my GoPro charger, my DJI, everything can just be charged at the same time. It has a few USB ports, really useful to, to carry this around with you because when you're in a hotel, very often you only have, if it's a cheap guest house, sometimes you only have one plug. So I plug that in to give me potentially another five or six plugs. And then finally, this is a camera bag which will fit pretty much everything in this area here, in here and in here, that will all fit quite comfortably in this and in this. I'll fly with this, this will go in the plane, and then this, actually guys, I'm going to put into my side boxes. I'm gonna be taking my side boxes from my motorcycle here in Thailand with me to Vietnam because I think in Vietnam I'm gonna try and find, buy or rent a Honda Maybe a Honda Dream if possible, and then we can just clip these side bags onto the bike, and that's how I, you know, reduce my weight in my backpack. I keep most of my electronic equipment safe in these boxes next to my motorcycle, and they're relatively sa relatively safe, and then you can store stuff in there overnight and it won't get stolen. And when that's all packed away, it looks like this. So there it is. This is everything. So obviously I'll travel with my shoes, and then in my backpack we have all my clothes, my MacBook, and a few of the chargers and things. But uh, still plenty of room in there, it's not going to be an issue to close that or anything. Probably about um, 12 kilograms, and that will go into the aeroplane, and then this will come with me. This is all my other camera equipment I just showed you. That will obviously go into one of the side boxes and I'll bring these with me on the plane. I do have a 40 kilogram allowance for, for luggage. So this is plenty of room, plenty of weight, I should say. And then here's the Peak Design uh, handheld bag, which will fly with me. It has the drone, the controller, all of my batteries. And um, it'll also have this camera in there with the GoPro 10 as well in there too and obviously my wallet and watch and phone. That will be in my jeans, which are over here because I'll be wearing them with one of the t-shirts or whatever on the day that I fly to Vietnam, which is on Friday. So in a couple of days we fly to Vietnam and the vlog, the adventure, the next level will start. I'm really excited for you to see it. I've been working quite a lot here in Bangkok on pre-production. I have a fancy cool new intro um, and we will be on the hunt for 
a new motorcycle and all of the cool plans I have, which is the second part of this video, which is I'll quickly tell you what the plan is for this series. Okay, so the plan is we will fly from Bangkok to Hanoi. Now, a lot of people who travel Vietnam tend to start in the south and finish in the north, and I'm doing it the opposite way around. If you're wondering why, it's something to do with my motorcycle adventure series, because what most people tend to do is go to Saigon and buy or rent a motorcycle and drive to the north. Now, not most people. Most people just travel on the buses, trains, and even flying around if they're in Vietnam for a few weeks. But we will be there for a few months and we're gonna be doing it on a motorcycle. And most people who do it on a motorcycle buy it in the south and sell it in the north. So I'm thinking if we go to the north, we'll be A, be able to buy a motorcycle for cheaper because anyone who's trying to sell it after their trip will probably um, sell it for a cheaper price just to get rid of it so it will probably be easier to buy one and then when we finish and we're in the south in Ho Chi Minh when we are looking to sell it we'll have a lot of people wanting to buy it so we shouldn't be able to worry about getting a good price so I just think if we buy a motorcycle, it's better to be in the north, is what I'm thinking. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to buy one. We might rent one. I am going to, as part of the first episode, fly to Hanoi and find a bike. I'll check on Facebook Marketplace. I'll speak to locals. I'll speak to my hotel or hostel, wherever I end up staying. And I might meet backpackers looking to sell their bikes. And if it looks good, I'll buy one. But if I can't find one within a day or two, I will quickly probably go to a rental place and organize a rental bike that I think the general rule is that you can rent a bike and then you can send it back to them in the north uh, on a train or a bus and uh, they will buy it back off you or rent it back off you basically. So I think it's pretty easy to rent a bike and then you don't have to drive it all the way back to the north is what I'm saying. And uh, so that's why we're going to the north first. And what we'll do is once we get the motorcycle, we're actually going to drive 10 hours or so north to the most northern area of Vietnam, right on the border of China. I had a look on Google Maps and there's a tower there, I think, on the border of China. And uh, I want to sort of start there. Obviously, there will be a few videos before that point you know, getting to Hanoi and then from Hanoi getting to the northernmost point. Once we get to the most northern point, that will be the start of the big adventure and I will say what we're doing, which is we're going to be trying to go from the very north to the very south. We're not going to every single province in Vietnam. It just would take a long, long time and I'm looking for this series to be a shorter one, two or three month trip, not a 14 month trip like the uh, Thailand series. And so we're just going to be going from the very north to the very south. That gives me a little bit more freedom to go in any direction and go anywhere we want. And I will probably do the north for the longest period of time. I'm thinking the first visa, because you only get 30 day visas at the moment. I think my first 30 days will just be in the Hanoi and northern uh, Vietnam area. Apparently that's the most beautiful part of Vietnam. So let's spend a good chunk of our time there. Then I will do a visa run either to Laos or back to Thailand and I'll come back. And that probably might not be a video. You might not even know I've left and come back um, because I want to get another 30 days to do the middle and the south. We might take three months, in which case I just have to do another quick border run to Cambodia or somewhere. But I think we can do it in two visas. We're not rushing. I'm going to be going at my own pace and really just trying to learn all of the mistakes I made from doing the first series, which was at times I was rushing. So no time limit, no province challenge. We're just going to find a motorcycle go to the very north and then motorcycle to the very south and see all of the wonderful things along the way, the culture, the food, the fun activities, and obviously just the feeling of being on the road. Very spontaneous, very unplanned. We're just gonna be going here, there, and everywhere. 
Recently, I asked you guys on Instagram and on a community post about giving me some recommendations. Thank you. I got so many, so my Google map on my phone is now littered with lots of points of interest and some of them look really cool. So I'm really excited to go to Vietnam. I'm really excited to get a new bike, to have a new adventure, to take this channel forward, to get a new fresh of uh, energy bouncing through me. And so, uh, yeah, we go. We go in a couple of days and the next level will begin. Thank you for all of the support on the first level. If you're new, welcome. And yeah, we're going to Vietnam. <laughs>